What up you guys, Chef Billy Parisi here from BillyParisi.com and I've got the absolute most perfect weeknight meal for friends, family, whoever, and it's called Chicken Millionaires. If you've been following me for a little bit, you know that I'm on this journey to sort of find the authenticity of a lot of these original recipes that were created 200, 300 years ago and this Chicken Millionaires is no different. Millionaise or a la millionaise obviously comes from the northern part of Italy in Milan and sort of just means in the style of Milan. So what we have here is a chicken millionaise and there are several different ways to do this or should I say proteins to use to make this. I've seen veal. I actually have a recipe for pork that I've done before. You can use steak. In this instance, we're gonna use chicken. And guess what? It's way easier than maybe you even thought. Of course, that's the way it's always been for all these recipes that I've been researching. Things are way more simple, way simpler, more simple. I don't know what it is, but it's just easier. So what we're gonna do first is get our hands dirty. I'm always about knocking out the hardest prep first and then getting to everything else and kind of make it easier. So the cooking process is incredibly simple. First thing we need to do is pound out some chicken cutlets. A chicken cutlet is essentially a chicken breast that is cut in half and it's nice and thin, but we are gonna pound it out a little bit more. So on a cutting board that has a ton of plastic wrap on it, what we're gonna do is set a chicken cutlet right into the center. We next wanna fold over the plastic wrap or you can lay another piece on it and using a mallet, we want to pound it down until it's about a quarter of an inch thick. It is extremely thin, but it will cook fast this is just the best way to do it. So pound it out. And because I've got a few different chicken breast cutlets here, I'm going to sort of lay them out on sheet pans that have parchment paper and we'll sort of just layer them up as they go. I don't want to overcrowd it because, well, I'll show you in a little bit. Once the chicken is completely pounded out, let's go ahead and set it to the side. Now we're getting towards spring. So I'm thinking chicken millionaires. We're going to serve a nice light salad, arugula, it's in season, it's gonna be absolutely delicious. The little prep that we need to do for that is slice up some cherry tomatoes. I got some assorted tomatoes here for colors, orange, yellow, red. And then next we're gonna thinly slice up a peeled red onion. Go ahead and set both of those to the side. And now to make a vinaigrette, this is super easy. Three ingredients here. We are going to squeeze in a fresh lemon. Get all that wonderful juice out of there. Next, we're gonna add in some honey for just a touch of sweetness. We simply finish it off by whisking in some extra virgin olive oil. That's it, three ingredients. It is so light, so refreshing. You are gonna love this vinaigrette, I promise you. Now, what we wanna do is go back and bread up our chicken millionaise. So when doing my research for chicken millionaise, I saw a lot of people put Parmesan in their breadcrumbs could not find that in the original versions that I was able to research and pull up. It's great to add at the end, but not necessary and not authentic to the original recipe as how it was intended, not because everyone just has Parmesan cheese that we'll just throw in our breading. Didn't really work like that. Again, you have to remember this is peasant food. What's available, what's lying around, hmm, some old crusty bread that we can just pound up and make it into nice little flakes and then bread something with. It's exactly what happened. And in fact, they didn't even use flour before dredging in the eggs and then into the breadcrumbs. But the culinary side of me needs to do the standard breading procedure. This is how it was taught. So what we're gonna do is line up three pans. You can use bowls or plates, totally up to you. In the first one, I'm going to add in some all-purpose flour. I'm going to season it with salt and pepper. Mix it together very well. You can even taste a little bit just to make sure it's seasoned. Now in the next pan, I'm going to add in some eggs. You also want to season this with salt. Whisk this together until it is completely combined. Think you're making scrambled eggs here. In the last pan, I've got some breadcrumbs. You can make these homemade or just get a simple kind of traditional family style breadcrumb that you can get from the grocery store. We're also going to season this with salt. Go ahead and give it a nice mix. And now we're gonna get ready. If you noticed, I seasoned everything along the way because it should be seasoned along the way. Everything should taste great. It's not gonna be over salty. We didn't salt the heck out of everything. We lightly seasoned everything so that's gonna taste wonderful at the end. And now we need to season the chicken breast as well. So on that pounded out chicken, we're gonna season it up with some sea salt. 
next with some fresh cracked black pepper. And now let it begin. I'm gonna put some gloves on just like I did before when pounding up the chicken. Go ahead and add one of the chicken cutlets right to the flour. Make sure it's completely coated, pat it if you need to. Add it over to the egg wash mixture. Again, just like the flour, make sure it's completely coated on both sides, move it around because if it's not completely coated, the breadcrumbs won't stick. So go over to the breadcrumbs. I sort of like to push it down in there and add a bunch of the breadcrumbs over top, just moving it around and press it down. Get those breadcrumbs really incorporated into the chicken. And then just like before, I like to set it to the side on a sheet tray or just the table stacked and lined with parchment paper until it is completely finished. At this point, once all your chicken is breaded up, it's gonna look amazing. We're going over to the cooktop. We've got an extremely large pan. What we need to do is add in some extra virgin olive oil. As soon as it begins to lightly smoke, which is around 350 degrees, we are going to add in our chicken. We're gonna turn the heat down just a little bit, make sure it doesn't burn. And this will literally cook for maybe three to four minutes per side. Again, the chicken is extremely thin. You want that perfect golden brown on all sides. That's what gives it that extra crisp, that flavor, that color. It's the only way to do this. Once they are brown, I like to set them on some paper towels to sort of drain off any excess oil that we don't want. Once they are fried up, let's go back over to wherever you're plating this thing up. I like to serve it up on a nice platter. Go ahead and layer up all those beautiful fried chicken mayonnaise cutlets. And for garnish, a very simple chopped parsley. Now to serve it up alongside the salad, go ahead and add one of the fried chicken cutlet mayonnaise right to a plate. Next, I'm gonna add on some arugula. Got some microgreens I'm gonna hit it with. Next, we're gonna add on some of those sliced tomatoes, followed up by the onions we thinly sliced. We're gonna add on some shaved Parmesan cheese. This is where the Parmesan comes in, not in the breadcrumbs. And then last but not least, you just wanna drizzle on a little bit of that lemon vinaigrette. Mwah. Done, let's try it out. You guys, this looks incredible. It smells amazing in here. My wife actually stopped by the studio and Snag one said she loved it. You better bring all of this home. Let's try it out, make sure it's good too. salad on there. Mmm. 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 Dude, that is so good. Mmm. 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 Perfectly seasoned that light lemon vinaigrette. Woo-hoo-hoo! So good. Not wasting any more time. Come back next week. You know the drill. I'm going to have something sweet. See y'all later. Mmm.